Hello world. In this video, I'll make a quick LED control program in like 10 minutes using this M5 Core Stack V2. Now due to the glare on my webcam, yeah, it's hard to see the uh, words on there, but in the upper left, you can kind of see the controls. So let me show you real quick. We're gonna press the on button. So this on is this bright LED. I'm gonna press the dim button in the center and you see it got a little dimmer and then off. So this only takes about 10 minutes uh, from the start of the packaging to running the program. It's very simple, very easy to use. So that's what we'll do in this video. Okay, so this isn't the first time we've used an M5 stack product. I used the V2 AI camera in another project and you can watch that by clicking here. So first let's go over the parts you'll need but actually uh, first welcome to the 166th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Please consider subscribing to my channel to watch me build that. Uh, this year, 2022, is going to be a big year. I'm going to get a 3D printer soon, and we're actually going to start installing and making some sort of wearable, you know, um, suit, if you will, to have Jar uh, Shane the AI in. So please consider subscribing and like this video if you enjoy it. So now let's go over the parts list you'll need. So as you'll see, uh, this M5 Stack Core 2, you can find that on shop.m5stack.com. Um, so I've been watching this for a while and it's been out of stock, but I was able to find it on Amazon really quick. So, um, you also need one of these unbuckled Grove cables and, uh, I just bought these little, the smallest one. No, I think I bought the 10 centimeter one. Um, and it comes in a package of a couple of them. And then I bought the smallest of one of these SK6812 digital RGB LED strips. So this connects to the um, Grove cable that we also talked about. So that's really all you need. Um, this is what it looks like when it comes in here. We have the core stack. It comes in this, the Grove cable, and the LED cable. So your M5 stack core will come with a small, I think, USB-C cable. There we go. And it comes with this cable, which you'll install to your uh, laptop or a computer for the first time. And then one of these cables. And one of these LED strips. So the first thing you'll do is connect your M5 stack to your computer uh, on a USB using the USB-C drive. You can start it and if you start it, it'll have the original screen that the uh, M5 Core 2 comes with and it's pretty, uh, it's pretty awesome. It kind of shows off all the things it has like the gyroscope, the microphone, the speaker, the settings, the Wi-Fi capability, it's really quite impressive. But to do your own programming, we're going to install UI Flow, which is what we'll do now. So you'll go to this UI Five Flow. You can find this on, uh, I believe, Document, UI Flow Quick Start, and then find the M5 Core 2. Um, I skipped this part, the driver installation, and went straight to this burning tool. And this burning tool, I have Windows, so I just downloaded it here. So it downloads to your downloads folder. Um, downloads. And then you just extract it. So here's the M5 burner. And then you extract all. And you'll see the folder like that. So you click on this, and the instructions are flawless on the website. I usually don't like instructions. I'm a good programmer and ignore it and then get frustrated, but these ones are actually really good. So you'll want to click on the M5 burner once you've extracted it.
and then you need to find your uh, the software you need. So we needed the UI Flow Core Two, and so um, once you connect it to your computer, you'll see this COM port. So mine was COM three, but then I found this uh, this right here, this UI Flow Core Two. Mine didn't look like that at first. It looks like this. So what you'll want to do is download it. And once you'll download it, so that's what I did here, this UI Flow Core 2. Then you click burn and it burns directly to your Core 2. And then you just follow the instructions like it says here in the documentation. So you're going to download, then you're going to burn. And then in the burning stage, it's going to ask you for your Wi-Fi settings. So you just put your Wi-Fi settings there. And then it'll go through this script and it'll literally count by 1% until you're 100% and it'll say burn successfully. And then once you do that, you can um, click close and you can uh, either turn it off or you can go to configuration and get your API key. Um, you'll need that API key. And then you'll want to change this start mode to internet mode. This was already in here, this SSID from the previous screen, and that was it. So when you first start it, so let's say you're done with that, you collect internet mode and you press save, you can turn off your um, core 2. And when you do, you're going to start it up and you can unplug it from your laptop and start it by pressing the power button here and holding it down and it will beep at you when it starts up and now you have UI flow versus the initial screen that it shows up in um, it's gonna have a start screen and I'm really sorry you can't see it but then it's going to start and it's gonna connect to your Wi-Fi and then it shows an API key and then what you'll need to do is go to flow.m5stack.com and for the first time, it's going to look like this, where it's going to ask for an API key. Um, you do have to switch the device. So um, mine says core two, and I was stuck on this. The default is this core, and it just wasn't working. Um, you can leave everything else the same, but there are some more instructions here for you. But um, again, make sure that you have the API key that's on the start on your um, start of your core two right there. And then make sure you pick the core two if you have the core two, the core if you have the core, or the AW or the fire. But um, that is one troubleshooting step that I missed. Okay, so once you do that, you get out of here. Okay, cancel. So then you'll have this blank UI flow, and um, this is like Blockly or Scratch if you remember that. But you can also have Python too, and you can code this in Python yourself. So what we're going to do is just use Blockly, and you can integrate, you can um, do your own programming right here on the screen. So you can click on this and change the screen background and color if you want. But all we're going to do is add some uh, text to the um, to the thing, and we're going to add a label. So let's do that. So we're going to um, change this and we're just going to put, um, let's put light controls and then let's make this 36 font. Okay, and then you can control it and center it. And then we're gonna put a button here and let's change this to say um, on and leave the font at 14 and the background and color the same. And then you can just uh, add another button. And let's put this um, to say dim. Leave it at 14 and notice how it says touch button one. And then we'll add another button below it that says off. 
and that says touch button 2. So now if we switch back to Python, you can see that it has uh, established this label for you and these three touch buttons. So now that we have that, we can um, install our LED strip. So there is a, on the back of this, there is the configuration file, and I don't think this will zoom. But you see this, it says port A right there. So that's where we're gonna install the Grove cable. All right, and then the LED strip. Um, you connect it up, let's see if it'll focus, probably not, but there's an arrow pointing outward. That's what you want to connect to your LED strip, right? Like imagine the signal and the power flowing through it, not back into this. It's flowing to the end of that. There we go. So now that we have that hooked up, we're going to hook that up to um, our units. So you go to units. We're going to click this RGB LED. And like I said, if you look at the back of your core 2, it's going to say port A. So once it says port A, click OK. And then one thing to note is uh, you'll want to click it again and put the count of your uh, how many LEDs. So this little tiny strip has 29 LEDs, but just note that it defaults to 10 LEDs. So now it's registering all 29 LEDs. And we're going to go to this um, events now, right? And we're going to find some loops. So, I'm sorry, some logic. So let's pull up this one. And then you can right click on it and put duplicate. So we have three um, buttons that don't do anything else. So we don't need like an if else. We just need one if and do. Then you go to units. Click on RGB LED and these will come up. So here's all the options you can do, and you can do even more. You can flash the LEDs in a random order, and it already gives you the loop. But all we want to do is set all of the RGBs to one color. So you just drag that and kind of connect it here, and it'll snap into place. So what we're going to do is um, do white. If this, oh, I'm sorry, let's uh, delete that block for now. So what we're going to do is touch the buttons. So if button A was pressed, so click that, and then you click that there. So we want, uh, hold, hold on. Oh, here we go. So what we're going to do is uh, connect the buttons. So the user interface. So we have this button here. So if touch button zero, which was this on button, right? Touch button zero. Um, it says set. So touch button was pressed. So here we go. We're going to click that into place. So if this touch button was pressed, right, what we're going to do is touch the RGB LEDs, click that, put that in there. You see how this little groove connects to it? And we're going to set it to white for on, right? Then you can just right click it and duplicate this block, snap it into place. If touch button one, which is the dim, right? Touch button one was pressed, then we're going to make it this kind of grayish color. And then if the touch button was one, so just right click it, duplicate, click it into place. Now if touch button two, right, touch button two. Oops, sorry, my OCD is kicking in. There we go, oop, there we go. Um, and now that's not, there you go, jeez. So then if touch button two is pressed, we're going to turn it to black or off. And again, it shows up all in Python now. So now 
that's it really so now you just click this run button but you see how we're disconnected so click this button if you see that and it will connect for you and then wirelessly right we're not connected to the laptop we run it says execute code successfully it's very similar to uh, arduino but this is all done over wi-fi and so now just like in the beginning of the video, if I press the touch button zero or on, right? So I clicked here. Then we have this nice bright white. Then I click dim, which was touch button one. We have this dimmer color. And then if I press off, there you go. Nothing black means uh, it's not showing anything. And that was touch button two. So there you go. We just completed our own LED control uh, program within 10 minutes. Um, really impressed with this. And I'm excited to see what we can do in the future. So I am probably going to hook this up to my um, V2 AI camera and see what kind of capabilities I can do with that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please like the video if you did. And leave a comment if you're working on something with an M5 stack. And subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.